Well, joining us now is Philip Lipsy, professor and the director of the Center for Study of Global Japan at the University of Toronto. Thank you so much for joining us on this. What do you think could have provoked this attack? It's, it's hard to say. Uh, as of this moment, we have very few details about the motives of the assassin. There's been some speculation in the media that the uh, assassination of Abe might have had something to do with this, that uh, you know, the assassin had been um, reevaluated after the fact because various revelations came to light about the ties between the Liberal Democratic Party and the Unification Church. And so there had been some sympathy towards the assassin in some corners of Japanese society. So that's the speculation at the moment, but we really don't know very much. Well, this incident happened, you know, just uh, about a week away from a nationwide local election that's scheduled for April 23rd. Uh, can you give us a, a snapshot, paint a picture of what the, what is the political landscape there right now in Japan? What is the political climate like? Sure. Um, you know, it's uh, a, not a general election, so the stakes are relatively low compared to a nationwide lower house election, for example. But you know, in, in a Japanese election campaign, uh, major politicians, including the prime minister, will come out and campaign and shake hands. Uh, it's very retail politics oriented. And so, you know, the, the style of politics in Japan is in some ways vulnerable to this type of incident. And after Abe's assassination, I think it's fair to say there was quite a bit of uh, discussion about how to make sure the security environment was safe uh, to avoid this type of thing from happening. But I think there are limits uh, unless you're going to put the prime minister behind a glass wall and cut off contact with the general public, which Japanese politicians are certainly not typically interested in doing. So I, I do think this incident will uh, lead to more debates about how do you really protect uh, important officials like prime ministers and former prime ministers. Well, I'm just, you know, historically, I'm curious about how security is, is generally is handled on these campaign stops. And, and, you know, you just kind of alluded to how you might think it might impact further campaign stops uh, throughout this election. Absolutely. So as you might know, Japan is an exceptionally safe country mm. with very strict gun control laws. And so it's relatively unusual, um, certainly unusual for a, an assassination to succeed, as we saw in the case of Abe. There have been historically violent incidents against politicians, but because firearms are usually not involved, uh, they, they don't get very far, and, and that's the case uh, as, as it appears so far in this incident as well. So I think that general message remains the case. Japan is very safe, mm -hmm. and that is something that allows Japanese politicians to maintain those personal connections with voters and shake hands and meet large crowds without uh, a large security detail. Um, but, you know, if enough of these incidents, um, you know, come in short succession, it, it may lead to a reevaluation of those kinds of traditional assumptions. Philip Lipsy, professor and director of the Center for the Study of Global Japan at the University of Toronto. We appreciate your time and perspective. Thanks for joining us.